that in the new project car, the little MX-5, and I've been driving this thing around for about a month or so now, so I've got a good idea of what I like about this car, what I don't like about it, and what I intend to do to make it better. So before I get started on this video, first up, just a big thank you to all you guys watching these videos. This channel hit over 2,000 subscribers last week, which is amazing to me, and I honestly don't think at this point I'd be even making these videos if it wasn't for you guys watching them, commenting on them, subscribing to my channel, so thanks. I mean it, it means a lot. All right, before I get too emotional, let's get on with this video. So here we are in the Mazda MX-5, and it's funny, when I first got into this car, I felt instantly at home in it, because a lot of this interior stuff is similar to what's in my Ford Ranger pickup, which is basically a Mazda with a Ford badge stuck on there. The steering wheel is practically identical. These heater controls are identical. There's a lot of familiarity in this cockpit, apart from the fact, obviously, that I'm about four foot lower to the ground in this thing than I am in the pickup but I like the interior it's basic it's functional I'm totally fine with that and I don't think it's aged badly at all uh, apart from the cassette deck here I don't think anyone would know that they were behind the wheel of a 19 year old car it's not bad Mazda not bad but enough of what it looks like what does it actually feel like to be in this car well this is one of my biggest gripes with this thing and I know it comes down to personal preference at the end of the day but I'd read that the Mazda was not designed for tall people okay but I thought well I'm six foot that's not that tall by today's standards well not according to this little MX-5 here if you are six foot and above you are a giant as far as this car is concerned and I don't think you're gonna get the space you deserve. Now I have got in and done the good old foamectomy on the driver's seat here which has got me about an inch or so lower into the seat uh, and it has helped things. I'm no longer looking straight through the top of the windscreen like I was before but given the choice I'd probably still like to go just that little bit lower. But that's not the worst of it. Oh no, let me tell you the most annoying thing about the interior of this car is the location of this big old steering wheel here. Now I will say as a bit of a disclaimer before I get going on this rant that I'm one of these people that like the steering wheel closer to me than the average guy or girl probably something like this would be about right but being a tallish guy this can be an issue in most cars to be honest with you so I'm willing to overlook that but not only is this steering wheel quite far away it is also ridiculously low when I first got into this car I thought wow that that's low but it's like the truck right there's an adjustment lever under here so I'm reaching around flapping about trying to find the thing nope nothing what you get here is what you are stuck with so this is one of the things I'm going to change about this car uh, quite soon is the steering wheel I'm going to go for a deep dish one uh, with a boss kit so I can get this steering wheel closer to me a little bit more comfortable in my hands and hopefully give me a little bit more leg room as well to stop my knees bashing on this thing all right, so I feel like I've been a little harsh on the old MX-5 so far, so let's look at something that this car is well known to be good for. It's drivability. There has to be a reason that this is such a popular car for the enthusiast driver. You see them everywhere. Track days, drift days, just motorsport events in general. Well, yes, there is a reason for it, and that reason is that it handles really, really well. Uh, I've taken it on a couple of B-Road blasts now, you know, B-Roads that I'd use to test the Capri, if you know what I mean. And it's just a really fun car to drive, even in stock form, as this one is. It's just really well balanced, it handles great, uh, and the independent rear suspension setup in the back, which is a setup that I'm new to, is somewhat of a revelation. It feels really good under this car, especially compared to the solid axle leaf sprung setup that's under the Capri. Uh, in fact, speaking of the Capri, this thing also stops a hell of a lot better than the Capri does as well, but I'm sure that's no real surprise to anyone. Now, one thing I do have to consciously still be aware of in this car is the quickness of this steering rack. It is much quicker than anything I am used to, and I keep having to dial back my inputs to stop hitting things. 
uh, like curbs <laughs> for example uh, it's not a gripe it's just something that I need a little bit more time to adjust to but so far overall having driven this car for a while it is undoubtedly a fun car to drive straight out of the box as well even in stock form like this one is and it should make a great base for a fun daily driver which is my intentions for this thing so finally on to the drivetrain then let's start with the real winner of this combination here this gearbox it is fantastic shifting has never felt this good i don't know why all cars can't feel like this to be honest with you this is the five speed box i don't know what the six speed feels like but if it feels anything as good as this it's already fantastic uh, so gearbox back we've got the 3.9 differential and having tested it it is unfortunately an open differential which is a bit of a bummer and considering the massive performance difference the LSD makes the Capri this will be something I have to upgrade in the future probably to a factory Torsen unit the 1.8 VVT engine under the hood is pretty good it's quite satisfying to rev it all the way to the red line between shifts and it actually sounds pretty good as well with the DIY induction kit I put on there during lockdown but as is a common criticism with these cars uh, it just needs more power you know considering the great chassis and suspension that's underneath this car the 140 odd horsepower that this 1.8 engine puts out just feels a little bit underwhelming I have to say it's definitely slower than the Capri I will say in its defense though it's a talky little thing uh, I actually find that aspect of it to be more impressive than the top-end horsepower but plans are in motion to upgrade this I don't want to say too much at the minute but I am excited I feel like this could be a properly quick fun little daily driver for not too much money uh, and when I say not too much money I mean in the car sense of the word so still probably quite a lot of money but yeah I'm looking forward to it watch this space so that about wraps up another update video on this little MX-5 here uh, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on with this car or any of my other project cars for that matter subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you and I will see you for the next video it's not that fast. <laughs>